Brianna Ray from Briaiy here to bring you another super fun video. Today I'm going to try my hand at soap creating for the very first time, um, and that of course required some new materials, which I am super excited to open up. First of all, we have the soap mold. I always try to do something fun and custom every year around the holidays for some of my you know, the people I want to give gifts to, but I don't really know a whole lot about, like co-workers or, you know, people that I'm currently doing the play with. So in this mold that I purchased, this cost me, I believe, $12.99. It comes with a silicone liner, so we can easily remove the soap, but this uh, block, this wooden block that'll hold things nice and sturdy as we are filling it. Um, it also came with two cutters, so one that is kind of this like zigzag shape, which I don't think I'm going to use. I think I'm going to use this flat one. So for $12.99, I think that is a pretty solid deal for a newbie. I also purchased a five pound thing of shea butter white melt and pour soap base. Um, I really want to get into cold process soap making, but I don't feel like I have the skill set required or the, obviously the tools required for that right now. And I thought that this was going to be a more cost effective option. Um, I also chose the five pound amount because uh, from what I understand this mold holds two and a half pounds so that'll allow me to make two loaves if you will. And I actually caught this while it was on sale. I think originally it's about 30, 31 dollars and I got it for about 26 and some change. The last new purchase were these dry botanicals. I wanted to use these just to kind of jazz up the soap a little bit. I have some different uh, essential oils and things that I wanted to kind of crumble these up and have like a, a very natural look to them. Some of these are closer to what I wanted. I wanted smaller ones like the jasmine and you know the, the lavender. The roses are a little huge um, but I might kind of peel off the petals a little bit because that is really all I wanted. Uh, but all of these different sets here um, cost me I think only about eight dollars seven ninety nine so I thought that was a pretty solid deal and honestly just opening this bag for the first time they smell amazing oh my god everything else that I needed actually already I, oh, I have several essential oils here like rose hip I have what is this tea tree oil I did a little bit of research on what exactly you're supposed to put in there because I know that there's like certain ratios that are appropriate for soap to make them safe essential oils aren't meant to go everywhere um, and there is a safe way to use them so please use them safely I guess that's all I can say um, and make sure that before you put them anywhere that you are doing your appropriate research on what is appropriate to be used where and when for example um, you know I used to put rosehip oil in some of my diffusers because other oils like this tea tree oil are ridiculously toxic to my cats so just make sure that you research what you're using and where it is appropriate to be used so that you're not putting yourself in any unnecessary harm even though this is not necessarily like a chemical reaction that we're going with with cold process this is still something that people are putting on their skin and it should be treated with a certain level of delicacy and i'm just gonna hop off my soapbox now haha <laughs> did you like that joke i thought it was pretty good I also do have some colorants. I have red and blue here. I think these are the only ones I'm going to use. Um, I do have some clear melt and pour soap left, but since I only really have enough to do two of these, I think I just kind of need to decide that I'm going to do one lavender and one rose. And that is going to require, I think, pink colorant here. So obviously with the white, that'll mix up and then a little bit of blue so that I can make a purple color for the lavender. And I will peel the uh, lavender buds sorry i'll put the lavender buds on top and i'll peel the rose petals uh, and place those on top as my botanicals once everything is done but i also did kind of want to do like a gradient sort of style look so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to melt some plain white and some colored and i'm going to do like color white and then the sprinkles on top just to kind of i don't know show that i put some thought into it i guess i also of course have some rubbing alcohol and a spray bottle so that i can adhere my layers together. Spraying that between layers is what is going to help your soap layers stick together. So uh, with all that said, I think by the time I'm done with this, with all the materials that I already had and the new ones that I bought, every bar of soap is going to cost me about $3, um, but it's going to be handmade and I think I'm going to write a little note to go with everything. Um, and that way it feels special and everyone kind of gets a little something, but it didn't completely ruin the bank for me. I am going to melt this using a double boiler method. So while I'm waiting for my boil to boil, my water to boil, I'm doing really great. Um, I'm going to cut this up into four equal pieces.
I only put about half of it in there, maybe a little more than half, because I know I'm going to need for it to melt down before I can fit everything in there. But I'm just going to take this Pyrex dish and drop it into the boiling water. I am still waiting for this big choke here to melt, so it's been about 15-ish, mm, 20-ish minutes almost, so I don't think I'm going to do both sets of soap today. While I'm waiting on that, I also wanted to show you what I did to the rose petals. I really just took them, I only used about half for this amount, which would be plenty for the top of this soap, but I took um, the buds off and then I just kind of crumbled them and peeled a little bit until I had, you know, single bits, more like sprinkleable, I guess. Um, some of them are bigger than others, but I think that's what gives it the character and the texture that we love. All right, I just ran my stick through here uh, and it does not appear to be catching any chunks. I think everything is melted. So I'm gonna pull this out, let it sit for a minute and then add in everything, <laughs> so. So I did learn that an appropriate amount of oil is about three teaspoons per pound. Um, I looked up the specific amount per oil because each oil is different and rosehip was recommended like 1.8 uh, or like 1.75 per pound. Since this is two and a half pounds, I think it would just be easiest to do um, three teaspoons total. So that's what I'm gonna do. Obviously one tablespoon is three teaspoons, so that is what I will be adding in here. I don't even know if that's going to be enough. Oh my gosh, this is only about half of that anyway. So I'm only gonna add about half of that. It's already forming the skin. Yay, love that. And a couple of drops of red. I'm just gonna do three for now. I still don't think that's as pink as I want. So we're now at nine drops. Um, actually, yeah, that's pretty good. This is like the nice strawberry milk color that I was hoping for. And I'm just gonna get that in there. Since I'm doing straight layers, I don't really care if it's perfect. I'm just gonna get it all out. Obviously got some bubbles in there, which isn't great. But you know, while we're here, I'm gonna pop the rest of my white soap base in here, and I don't care if it's a little bit discolored, because frankly, that colorant didn't do a whole lot anyway. And I'm going to put this back on the double boiler. This is not a cute angle, and I'm really sorry for that, but I'm going to see if I can spray out these bubbles. Ooh, that works really nice, actually. Um, this is eventually going to have to get sprayed again once it hardens so that it can adhere the next layer, but I think it looks pretty good. At this point, I thought a voiceover was far more appropriate because the process was pretty much exactly the same, just whether or not I was adding colorant. I did spray with the rubbing alcohol before adhering the next layer, and I am sprinkling the rose petals on top of this pink one and letting it set overnight. I believe I officially let it set for about eight hours before finally taking it out of the mold, and I think it actually turned out really great. You can see here that I'm pulling everything out. I think this is really satisfying to watch, actually, but... It did get kind of frustrating to get it out and operating appropriately, but uh, it was so satisfying. I'm also going to throw a couple of tips in here as after this one I am going to start working on the second loaf which is the lavender loaf. This is a lavender and bergamot. I'm once again cutting up all of my cubes and melting everything down. I did create a purple color for the bottom layer and I did try to wait until everything was cool to the touch before I poured it on top. And for the bottom layer, the best way to make sure that it's ready to pour is if you blow on it and nothing ripples as I'm doing here. So make sure you give it a good spray. Some sources said don't add too much, others say you can't add too much, so I just went with it. Um, and of course, I did actually sprinkle on the lavender before it was hardened enough, so if you wanna add something on top, make sure you wait so that everything can kinda of stick on top more like this. I would also recommend you don't forget to shake off any excess after it is dry and before cutting, or it's going to make it look just a little bit funky. I did get some 
contamination in the soap at the bottom. I think everything turned out really great, uh, but I thought just having the soap alone wasn't enough and I thought I needed to package it appropriately. So I just measured it along and cut one inch bars and I ended up with some that were a lot better than others. Um, and on the edges here, you can actually see on some of these that there's more of a gradient look because of some of the purple that got on the edges where the white ended up being. So the interior pieces were probably the better looking ones. But with all that said, time to package. So to package single bars, I just stuck them into a plastic sandwich bag and wrapped them around the back. I did tape it down just to kind of hold it in place and sort of make it look like it was shrink wrapped, which I think worked out pretty well. And after that, I would grab some scissors, cut off the Ziploc part of it, and I would tie it off with a ribbon in a matching color. So here I have like a pink with this like copper in it. And I just kind of tied it nice and center and took the time to put it into a nice bow, which you can see here. And I'll do the same thing with a single bar of the lavender after I clear out any of the contamination pieces, which I'm still a little sad about. But you know, you live and learn. I'm also going to do a package of two right after this, but you know, I guess I thought I wanted some fancy editing. See, look at that, super easy. <laughs> Um, but people did really like these and I did actually take like gift tags and use that to cover up the tape on the back. To do two, I still took the sandwich bag but I shoved one in one side and the second bar in the other side, just like you can see here. And I just kind of folded them, again to kind of pull and make that shrink wrapped look. And I again cut off the top and this time I just kind of folded it like I would gift wrap and again covered that with a sticker gift tag so that it would look clean and pretty. And by the time I was done I had a gross amount of soap guys. It is so much soap that I made. I had tons of individual bars. I think I made five of each. Five of the lavender and bergamot and five of the regular rose. The doubles, I did do one of each and all of them, and I ended up with six of those because somehow my 10 inch loaf came out with 11 bars of soap each. So yeah, I had plenty to work with and some of them did look better than others. I did kind of keep the uglier bars for myself and I gifted the big ones. I actually really only kept the one double set of ugly bars. Um, they smell awesome. My fiance actually came in the room and said he couldn't stand in there for a while because it smelled a little overwhelming, but I really do think these turned out really great and it was a really fun project. I really enjoyed doing this. I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope you got some inspiration today. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. I do put on new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time and I would love for you to be here for the next one. Thanks again so, so much and I hope to see you then. Bye!